chapter 21, the introduction. There was an hour each morning in the dim light of the dawn when all the island animals were safe. You see, long ago, they had agreed not to hunt or harm one another during that hour. They called it dawn truce. Most mornings, the island residents would gather in the great meadow and spend the hour chatting with friends. Of course, not everyone attended the gatherings. The bears had never made an appearance, and the vultures just circled high above. But on a particular morning, an unusually large group of animals had come out to discuss some important news. Settle down, everyone. I have something to say. Swooper the owl hooted to the crowd from the lowest branch of the dead tree. Last night, I saw a mysterious creature right here in the great meadows. It seemed to be covered in grass, so I couldn't get a good look at it. But I think it may have been a monster. Looks of concern swept over the crowd. What was the creature doing, said Dark the Weasel. It was speaking the super, said Swooper. It kept repeating the same words over and over again, but each time it sounded a little different. At first it sounded like a cricket, and then it sounded like a raccoon, and then it sounded like an owl. What was it saying? The dog down, said dig, dig down the dog hog. I could be mistaken, said Swooper, but I think it was saying, hello, my name is Roz. The crowd began to chatter. Just where was this creature, said Fink the Fox. Everyone turned as the owl slowly pointed his wing to a grassy lump in the meadow. It was a rather ordinary looking grassy lump until it began to move. As you probably guess, that grassy lump was Roz. She had been there the whole time, camouflaged, watching, listening, and with all the animals looking at her, she decided to introduce herself. The crowd stared in disbelief at that grassy lump, started shaking and bulging upward and crumbling apart, and there was the robot. Then, using her body and voice, the robot spoke to the animals in their own language. Hello, my name is Roz. The crowd gasped. Super fluttered up from his branch and screeched, It's the monster! I am not a monster, said Roz. I am a robot. Flock of sparrows suddenly took off. Leave us alone, squeaked Dart as he crouched low in the grass. Return to whatever horrible place you've come from. I've come from here, said Roz. I've spent my whole life on this island. Why haven't you spoken to us sooner, screeched the owl from higher up in the tree. I did not know the animal language until now, said the robot. Crown Point, the buck, had heard enough, and he slipped into the forest with his family. So what do you want from us, growled Fink. I have observed that different animals have different ways of surviving, said the robot. I would like each of you to teach me your survival techniques. I'm not going to help you, screeched the owl. From that very top of the tree, you seem so unnatural. The monster is just waiting to gobble us up, shrieked the dig dong, and the ground hog disappeared into a hole. I will not gobble anyone up, said Roz. I have no need for food. You don't need food, Fink re relaxed a bit. Well, I need food and lots of it. Why don't you make yourself useful and find me some food? What would you like me to do, said Roz. Can you hunt? The fox smiled at a hare on the far side of the gathering. Almost time for breakfast. The fox's smile disappeared. Berries? I'm hungry for meat, not berries. Good luck to you, Roz. You're going to need it. And the fox trotted away. Roz looked up at the tree, but the owl had gone. And when the robot looked down again, she realized everyone else had gone too. On to chapter 22. The new word. A new word was spreading across the island. The word was Roz. Everyone was talking about the robot, and they wanted nothing to do with her. I don't think I'll feel, ever feel comfortable knowing that Roz is on the prowl. I hope Roz camouflages herself as a rock forever. Shh, there's Roz now. Let's get out of here. Roz wandered the island, covered in dirt and green growing things, and everywhere she went, she heard unfriendly words. 
the words would have made most creatures quite sad. But as you know, robots don't feel emotions. And in this moment, that was probably the best. Chapter 23, The Wounded Fox. My face, my beautiful face, somebody help. I think the fox was lying on a log, howling in pain, with a face full of long, sharp quills when Roz appeared. Isn't there anybody else who can help? Would you like me to leave, said the robot. No, please don't go. I'll take what I can get. What happened? I didn't think that porcupine could see me in the bushes, but when I went for his throat, suddenly there were quills in my face. Why did you go for his throat? Why do you think? Because I was hungry. If you had not attacked the porcupine, you would not have had quills in your face. Yes, Roz, I know that. But a fox has got to eat. Just didn't expect him to put up such a fight. Look, there are even quills in my paws. I can't walk. My face is numb. I could die if you don't help me. What would you like me to do, said the robot. I'd like you to pull out the quills. Roz calmly knelt beside Fink and said, I will pull out the quills. The robot started to tug on the quill, but it snapped off in her fingers. Fink yelped and said, pinch it closer to the skin. So Roz pinched the broken quill closer to the skin. And then, very slowly, she pulled it out. The fox winced in pain and said through her teeth, Please, Roz. Please, Roz. Pinch it closer to the skin. The fox winced in pain. Please pull them out faster. This is agony. Roz quickly tugged out another quill, then another and another. The fox lay perfectly still, eyes closed tightly, wind whistling through his nose until every single quill had been removed and placed in a neat pile beside him. Fink struggled to his feet. Thanks, Roz. I owe you one. The fox smiled briefly, and then he limped away. On to chapter 24.